Welcome back to PWR Network. And Auburn, Michigan is the broadcast home of PWR Network. The world in your hands. Hello and welcome to the PWR Network's coverage of the 2014 St. Baldrick's Charity Fundraiser, hosted here in Kansas City. I'm Sam Toddy. And I'm Andrew Toddy. And we're here to give you an inside look at the event with PWR's roaming reporter, Ray LaPietra. I'm Ray LaPietra, your roving reporter for PWR Network. We're at McFadden's doing the St. Baldrick's Charity Foundation fundraiser. As you can see, there's a lot of enthusiasm here. And just take a look at this crowd behind me. Thank you, PWR Network, for being part of this big event. In 1999, one of the founders of the St. Baldrick's Foundation, Tim Kenny, proposed a question to colleagues, John Bender and Edna McDonnell. How will you give back in return for your own good fortune in business? According to legend, it was Edna's thick head of hair that gave John the big idea. Shave their heads for donations to raise funds for kids with cancer. In 2000, the annual Reinsurance Industries St. Patrick's Day Party held at Jim Brady's Pub in Manhattan became the first St. Baldrick's event. By 2001, after the second event raises $140,000, John and Enda begin plans to expand beyond the reinsurance industry. With 37 head shaving events in the spring of 2002, Shaving Heads has now raised more than $1 million. In 2004, the St. Baldrick's Foundation is created to maximize volunteer-driven effort. In its first year as an independent foundation, St. Baldrick's continued to grow exponentially, raising more than $5.3 million. Proceeds go to the cooperative research of the Children's Oncology Group. By 2007, $12.9 million is raised by over 18,000 shavies at 402 events. In 2010, the St. Baldrick's Foundation hosts its first Research Priority Summit, attended by 16 of the most respected pediatric cancer researchers in the U.S. St. Baldrick's volunteers raised more than $30 million in 2012 by shaving heads and raising funds in bold new ways. This year's record-setting fundraiser efforts allow the fundraiser to mark a milestone. $100 million in childhood cancer research grants since 2005. Now, St. Baldrick's is still going strong.
personal connection would be in uh, November, I found out that I had B, diffused B cell lymph node lymphoma. I am here this evening on behalf of my friend Ray, who is the MC here tonight, to raise funds for the St. Patrick's Foundation for Children's Cancer. so many people came together for this event. I mean, how many times have you been able to fill a room for a cause that you believed in? Yeah, that is something really cool about this event. I mean, all these people come out and are quite courageous, quite honestly, going up there, shaving their head. I myself, personally, that's something that would be quite difficult for me. And it's just amazing that these people come out standing in solidarity with their loved ones and even complete strangers just showing, you know, you're not alone in this fight and that there's somebody behind you, and I think that's just amazing. It's true, and then also, I, I understand that the point of going out there and getting your head shaved is because you do want people to come up and ask, because it is obviously not something that you're very used to seeing. So they come up to you and they ask, it's like, hey, well, why is your head shaved? And it builds awareness um, for, the, for this disease and builds awareness for um, the cure that you need to fight for the cure. You need to be able to put money into that because it's not just going to happen on its own. Like We have to do something to help it along. I think these kids, you know, coming along through all this, there needs to be better treatment. There really does. They're fighting every day. They're just, you know, losing all ability to go about their regular routine. And that's something that we need to support. We need to support a better source, a better resource to help these kids get back to really just being kids. And that's why we have these charity events. It's so that you can raise money for better research, for better drugs, for better everything. And more importantly, to be able to help the families who are paying thousands and thousands of dollars per treatment, like not per a whole session to be able to get this disease gone from their child, but just like per chemotherapy. Yeah, this is this is something that definitely needs to change. It needs to become more accessible and more affordable. I mean, these are people's lives we're talking about. And it's not just the people who come here to get their head shaved and to raise money, but it's also the people that we should recognize are the ones that actually come out here and put it on, like put the whole thing together and organize it. In fact, we are going to go back to the scene and talk to a few of them right now. Thank you to Lillian Caldwell of the PWR Network. I am the lead organizer of the event this year for um, KTUMB SOMA Group. It's a student organization that uh, sets up this, this event every year in order to uh, raise money for childhood cancers. And this year I had the role of actually being the lead organizer, which has been amazing. And I'm so glad that we've had so many great people come out and so many shavies. Um, and that's about it. I'm the president of SOMA and I helped put this event together and I have a personal connection to raising money for uh, research with cancer 
and uh, I've had a few relatives that have been affected by this. Uh, I think it's a great cause to get people to come here and shave their heads and raise awareness. You know, because sometimes you see people with their heads shaved and you're like, oh, you know, like, they have that. But you know, when a lot of people, more and more people shave their heads and raises awareness, it would, um, it would help to raise money and provide a cure possibly for something that affects a lot of people and, you know, it's a deadly killer in childhood cancer. That's awesome, and it looks like the event's really picking up. Yeah, I even heard a few people down there volunteering to shave their heads on site, you know, without pre-signing up. That's pretty cool. Yeah, no kidding. I mean, it just being at the events encouraging you to do something like that, like that's that's really something there. <laughs> and quite honestly, that that atmosphere down there, it's, it's just, you know, it's fun. It looks fun. These people are enjoying themselves, and that's what it's all about. It's about getting out there, enjoying yourself, while at the same time supporting a great cause. Yep, and there'll be more fun to come right after these messages. Hi, Lillian Caldwell here. I'm PWRtalk.com's founder and president. I have good news and bad news. The good news, we're 10 million listeners strong and growing. The bad news, no more free lunches. As of June 1st, to listen to our shows, you'll need to be a paid member. 20 bucks, one time. That's all it takes to enjoy access to our quality shows. Click on the Get Registered link at the top of every page at pwrtalk.com today to get registered before this one-time, lifetime offer ends. Thank you for your continued support. We look forward to hearing from you. Welcome back to the PWR Network's coverage of the 2014 St. Baldrick's Day event. And we are now going to hear from a mother who has actually been personally touched by this horrible disease. Yeah, that's right. And, you know, that type of situation is, you know, the kinds of people who would be benefiting from this kind of charity. And, you know, on the one hand, it's, it's a sad story to see, you know, just kind of where they started out. But on the other hand, it's quite inspiring to see how far they've come along with their recovery and you know this is one of those stories that really boosts your want and drive to really support something like this these are the kinds of people we're helping and that's it's a good thing and these kids are fighters they are not going down without a fight and they are not going quietly and this girl's story she is the prime example of someone who is not going to let this defeat her and now we're going to the scene to speak with the mother as she recalls her daughter's struggle and her unwillingness to give up. cell brain tumor and her optic chiasm on September 12th of 2008. Uh, it was kind of a scary thing to hear that your child has cancer and for people to, you know, it was just really scary. The doctors swarming around you all of a sudden, you just, it just really overwhelming at first. Uh, she was admitted to Children's Mercy that night and we had consults with all the different doctors. She, uh, she started chemotherapy, she had to get a port implanted in her chest so that they could do frequent IV accesses. She was given six rounds of chemotherapy, two different types, three times each. 
She was in and out of the hospital between September and March of 2009. The radiation treatments required her to lie flight flat on her back on a radiation table with a plastic mask strapped to the table so she couldn't move her head at all, and that was really terrifying to her. She managed to get through it all, and, and by June of 2009, we were told that she was cancer-free. She began having more pain in her legs and arms and in October of 2009, and the doctors really couldn't tell what was going on with her. It got to where she couldn't even walk, and by November of 2009, she was admitted for pain, and they did a bone marrow biopsy just to rule out anything and it came back positive for acute myeloid leukemia and that was caused by the etoposide or VP16, one of the chemotherapy drugs that they gave her for her brain tumor. It was pretty scary to find out that that quickly it caused a secondary cancer. She was in the hospital for two months at that point to get into remission, more chemotherapy. She also developed a fungal infection in her lungs and in her brain which was a setback to her bone marrow transplant, but she managed to get through that and got the transplant in March of 2010. It starts out with total body irradiation where they shoot radiation at your whole entire body, which is another scary thing for her. It was hard because she could hardly walk and she had to sit on like a bicycle seat and she could hardly even sit there because it hurt so bad. And then five days of hard, hard chemotherapy to kill her entire bone marrow system, and then a day off, and then the transplant. Thankfully for her, she had six perfect matches for bone marrow, which is very unusual. Most kids don't even get one perfect match, but she got six, and so that helped her a lot to, to have a perfect match. She got through her transplant, but she did get the worst case of mouth sores the doctors had seen in a long, long time. She couldn't swallow couldn't eat. It was horrible. But she got through that, managed to get out of the hospital fairly soon after her birthday, and was doing well until the fall again of 2010, when she had a really bad headache and complained of loss of vision. So they did some more studies, and it looked like she had some issues going along her eye nerves again. So they gave her high-dose steroids, which caused an immediate weight gain of about 90 pounds within three months. It was pretty scary. But in January of 2011, an MRI revealed enhancement in the original brain tumor site, and it looked like the brain tumor had come back, and there was nothing they could do with her bone marrow, so, so new. They were afraid if they tried any kind of treatment, it would put her back into uh, needing another bone marrow transplant, and she wouldn't survive it. So they, they pretty much sent us home and said, there's not much we can do for you. But we got a hold of doctors in Chicago, and they were able to do surgery to find out what was really going on. And it was just scar tissue, and was pinched on her eye nerves. But they, she was completely blind after the surgery. So not only is she way overweight now from the steroids, she's completely blind. So she was recovering, trying to get back to walking, working on getting back to school. And then in July of that, of that same year, 2011, um, she was diagnosed again. She had another hernia issue. And the hernia reopened that occurred. And they did two surgeries in two days. And she had a stroke during the second surgery. She was in the ICU, intubated for several weeks. They really didn't find out that she had the stroke until she was woken up. And it affected her right side and her arm and leg, she can't move, and her speech simmer was affected by the stroke. So she was trying to recuperate from that, and she was doing pretty well. In rehab, in and out of rehab, working hard on therapies. In March of 2012, she was having breathing issues, so that's when they diagnosed her with what they think is bronchiolitis obliterans, which is graft versus host from a transplant, affecting her lungs by causing scar tissue, and the scar tissue wings harden, so her lungs don't expand and contract like they're supposed to. Um, the only well-known cure for that is a lung transplant, but since she's had two, two cancers, she doesn't qualify for the lung transplant. So we're trying different alternative therapies and medicine to see if that'll help. It was pretty scary to find out that that quickly it caused a secondary cancer. She was in the hospital for two months at that point, to get into remission, more chemotherapy. 
She also developed a fungal infection in her lungs and in her brain, which was a setback to her bone marrow transplant. But she managed to get through that, and five days of hard, hard chemotherapy to kill her entire bone marrow system, and then a day off, and then the transplant. The doctors are always amazed at how well she can pull through and come out of things, and she's maintained a positive attitude through the whole thing, and right now she's just doing braille studies at home and trying to get her strength up so maybe she can go to school or try something else in the fall. She'll be 16 in a couple weeks, and all she wants is a pink Volkswagen for me to drive her around in, so <laughs> that's what we're working on trying to do for her right now. <laughs> but thank you for listening, and I, I hope this helps someone else down the road to, to get through some of the things that she's had to deal with. A really inspirational story. Absolutely. And there's still more to come from St. Baldrick's right after these messages. And we're back with more on the St. Baldrick's charity event. Now we're going to go back to the floor and take a look at some of our shavees for the evening, both those who signed up prior to the event and those who have actually raised money at the event to have their hair shaved tonight. Take it away, Ray. every year that I can. Yeah, 
that. So there's a lot of cancer in my family, and I just figure this was a really great cause. And this is a great event. Like, this is so much energy coming from my class, coming from the community, and it's really great. I hope that we can find a lot of great cures. It was really nice to hear a lot of these people's different stories and you know why they're here to support St. Baldrick's tonight. It's true and tonight's event has been a great success. Yeah they actually and that's great and that's the only way we're gonna make any kind of progress or any kind of advancement in this field is from the generosity of others from human beings just acting like decent human beings and caring for one another. PWR Network is excited to announce four unique, exclusive station sponsor packages. Each package is packed with ten times the value you'll pay with your check or card. Visit PWRtalk.com today. Click on the About Us link at the top of every page. Learn how we'll feature you to our growing station listeners, now over 9 million strong. Call Lillian Caldwell at... 734-827-9407. Will you be the one of our four lucky sponsors in 2014? Visit PWRtalk.com and boost your luck today. And to send us off, we take you back to the scene with PWR's roaming reporter, Ray LaPietra. I'm Ray LaPietra, your reporter from PWR Network. We're done with our event at St. Baldrick's. I hope you enjoyed it. There's more footage to come and more events to come. Thank you. Thank you for listening to PWR Network. I'm Lillian Caldwell, the founder of PWR Network. I personally thank you for your support. To enjoy the benefits being heard by our listeners, call me at 734-827-9406 to explore how to become a PWR Network host or sponsor. Once again, I'm Lillian Caldwell, the founder of PWR Network. Thank you for listening to this program. We look forward to hearing from you.